Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be tearing up this Mac Mini M2 Pro Edition to unveil all of the hidden secrets and workings of what lies within. And as you can see, this one has four USB-Cs, which means it is the Pro version. So the first step we need to do is pop off this cap. Very simple to remove. And then what we need to do next is remove the bolts around the circular area. Once you have all of these screws unscrewed, the next step is to pop this open carefully. And you can't really take it off quite yet because there is an antenna cable attached here. And there's also a screw that we need to unscrew in order to remove it. There we go, one little bolt. And we're not quite done here yet because there's also an antenna that's clipped onto there. And I'd recommend getting some sort of tool and kind of prying it off from the bottom or the side. And there we go. And this is the antenna clip you can see right there. And that is where the screw goes into. Now the next step is to remove the fan over here. And there's gonna be four screws that we need to unscrew. There's gonna be two on the sides here and two that you can directly reach from the top to bottom here. Once the screws are removed from the fan, next we need to slightly pull this out and then we can start to bring it up like so and be careful here because there is going to be a cable that we need to uh, pry off as well and that's what we need to pry off in order for the fan to come off we're just going to come at it from the bottom here and just like that the fan has been removed and this is what the cable connector for the fan looks like. The next thing we need to do is unplug some of these cables here that run to the power supply. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the thicker one out here. You can see it comes right off. And then same with the thinner one here. All we need to do is kind of grab it and give it a little pull. And just like that. Now the next thing we need to do is actually unscrew some of the bolts here that are connecting the power supply and the logic board to the actual housing slash case itself. So we'll start off with the silver bolts down here and this is what's connecting the power supply to the logic board. After the two power supply bolts have removed from the logic board, we need to do these black bolts here. And just a word of warning, these bolts are screwed in very tightly, so you're gonna have to apply a lot, a lot of force to unscrew them. So I did unscrew them with this little guy here, and now we can finish them off with the electric one, because it's always funner with an electric screwdriver. Once the three logic board screws have been unscrewed, there's going to be three more inside of these holes here. And it is going to be pretty deep and I'm going to have to add some form of extension so my screw can actually get inside of the hole here. And I will say it really helps if you have a magnetic screwdriver because some of these bolts are going to be pretty tough to remove without one. And then once you have all of the bolts unscrewed from the logic board, as well as the power supply cables, you can now push this out. We just kind of put our thumbs here and on the side, kind of just give it a push and you can see it comes right off just like that. And for those of you that want to see a close up of everything, this is exactly what it looks like. Now the next thing we need to do is remove the heatsink cover from the logic board. And the first thing we're going to do is unscrew these two bolts on the side here. Once the two bolts from the side here are removed, we can flip the logic board over and we need to see the ones with the foam pads here. They have gold rings around them. This one here, this one, and this one. They have little black pieces attached to them, as you can see on top right there. It's like a soft little piece of adhesive slash foam. You can remove those and then unscrew the screws. And then once all four of the gold ring screws are unscrewed, we can flip this over and we should be able to take the casing off. And actually there are two more I missed over here, just like on this side. So let's get those real quick. Okay, now we have the, those final two screws unscrewed. And now the casing can just come right off. 
and now we can actually see the heat sink itself. And in order to remove this, all we need to do is remove these four screws under this black rectangle here, which stores the M2 uh, processor. And once the bolts are removed, you're gonna get two of these bars that hold the CPU in place. And then we also wanna unscrew the two little black bolts here around this uh, rectangular black area. And then once those are removed, you can pry this right off. You could see the bottom of where the CPU lives. And that is under the CPU. And then in order to take the actual heatsink off, we can just kind of give it some force and then it'll come right off and we will be exposed to the M2 processor chip. And I did wipe off some of the paste there and you can see that they put a cute little Apple logo on all of their processors. And then this is the bottom of the heatsink that connects to the actual M2 processor. And then the last thing I wanted to cover was in the housing, we did not remove any of this part here. And I believe this is where the power supply lives. And in order to remove this from the housing, we need to uh, remove a pin that's located here. And I recommend getting like some tweezers and pulling the pin out. And you can see that the pin did fall. And this is what the pin actually looks like. Once the pin is out, then we can uh, remove the power unit here. And first we can remove the silver shell that covers the power port. You can now twist this power supply connector and then you can remove it from here. There we go, and we twisted it. Now, one thing to note is you're not gonna be able to pull this out right away because the cables that go to the logic board here have some adhesive or glue. So you need to peel this cable running along the back here off and then you should be able to pull this whole uh, unit out. All right, and we are we now removed the adhesive from here, and now this back cable can actually wobble around. Now you can see we can actually pull this right out. And if anyone wants to read the text on the power supply, there's the information right there for you. And there we have it guys, a full teardown of the Mac Mini M2 Pro. If you're interested in any of the tools we use in this video, links will be down in the description. And if you wanna see more teardowns tear like this in the future, be sure to click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.